apples. Apples are delicious. They're all year round. But when fall comes, I must say that I get to craving apple dishes, anything using apples. And this is exactly what happened with this apple cake that I'm making right now. I have four Granny Smith apples that I've peeled and cored. I had, I always have fruit in a big basket in my kitchen on the table. A third of a cup of sugar, by the way. And one day I had about two apples left. And, and you know what happened. They were no longer in eating condition. They were a little kind of crusty dried and we needed a dessert. It's a teaspoon of cinnamon, by the way. And I didn't have a recipe and I didn't feel like dealing with a recipe. So what did I do? I just whipped something together. And that's what this is. And it worked. So I'm sharing it with you because it's one of those recipes that are foolproof. You're going to love it. You're going to use it. You can make it with pears. You can make it with peaches. You can make it with anything. But it really has its origin in the fall. I forgot my lemon juice. I want the juice of one lemon, which you should pretty much put in before you put in the cinnamon and the sugar, but it's okay. It helps not only bring out a nice flavor in the apples, but it also, if you're cutting a bunch of an, a bunch of apples in advance, it prevents them from browning because the lemon juice, the little acidity from the lemon juice, coats the apples. But that's okay. We've saved it. We're fine. And I'm just going to give it one more stir, put them aside, and they can get all coated and macerated with that cinnamon lemon sugar. And we'll put that over here, and now we'll get started on the simplest cake in the world. I have a stick of softened butter. I'm putting in a cup of sugar. That's it for starters. Then get your mixer going and get the butter and the sugar creamy. And while that's happening, I'm gonna make the dry mixture in another bowl. One cup of flour, and you know, you should level it out. We are baking after all. A teaspoon and a half of baking powder. So we'll just shake that, and then oh, eyeball that a little bit, why not? and a teaspoon of salt, a nice teaspoon of salt. And that's all we need. And instead of sifting it together, I'm just gonna whisk it together, the easiest way to get your dry ingredients all incorporated. And that's ready to go. Last but not least, we have our eggs and vanilla. Again, this is just the simplest little cake. You can see how I, how I got kind of excited that I might be able to do it myself. I'm just going to turn this off for a second because that's all creamed beautifully. And I'm breaking these eggs into one bowl. A few little rules of baking that you might as well adhere to. I don't want eggshells in my beautiful batter since I've gotten it started already. So I'm going to put the two eggs in here, get them starting to mix together. You don't want to overmix it. And then two good teaspoons of vanilla. We have that lemon juice. We have the nice tart apples. So the couple teaspoons of vanilla will really bring in a beautiful flavor with the cinnamon too. All right, just for one second, I'm just gonna bring this up. Not too much. Okay, that's good. And I'm gonna lift this up and just scrape down the sides a little bit to make sure that I have all the butter and the eggs all organized together. And that's it. Now I'm just going to put my dry ingredients in, which I've already combined here. Just dump them in. Again, nothing fancy about this batter. Close it up, and then we want to just mix to combine. Start out low so the flour doesn't go all over the place. Make sure that the wet gets mixed in with the flour, and then let's just lift it up. Boom. And that's it. You have finished your batter. In fact, if you didn't have a mixer like this, you could just do it by hand. Now, if I was alone, yes, I would start licking the mixer. I can't help it. Old habits die hard, and if somebody was here with me who belonged to my family who was sitting in the other room and they heard a mixer and they knew I was baking, they'd be eating this too. All right. Now, one quick little mix with the spatula. All right. There you go. Now, I have prepared an 8 by 8 inch baking pan here. It's got butter and then it has some parchment paper, one of my favorite little baking tools, actually any tool. I keep parchment in the cupboard and I use it for a number of things. All right, now we have not only a mixing bowl, but we also have the paddle for somebody to nibble on. 
So I'm just going to smooth this out. It doesn't look like a lot of batter, but it's going to puff up when it, once it has the apples on it. Just smooth it evenly. And the thing that the parchment does, aside from it doesn't stick, is that you can so easily lift the whole thing out if you just want to cut it in squares. All right. Little finger action here to get the batter off. And next thing I do, before I get my cake into a 375 degree oven, cooks for a good 45 minutes. But here's where I might try to be mm, just a little bit fancy-ish, just to make it look a little bit harder than it really is, is that I will start to take the apples and just shingle them in one direction. And I like to do the outsides in the same direction, and then I go down the center with a completely different pattern, and then the batter puffs up around it. The scent in your house is just the essence of fall. So when I finish this, I'm going to just pop this into that oven. It'll be all ready. It's a snack. It's a dessert. It's a breakfast. It's anything you want it to be. Oh, yeah. It looks beautiful. That's exactly what you want to see. Carefully remove it from the oven. Oh, makes me happy when I smell cinnamon and apples together. It's nothing but good memories. Such a simple, simple, simple recipe brings so much pleasure. And don't forget, you can use pears or you could use any other kind of fruit. Just make sure that you cook it a little bit longer than you think because the, the fruit brings a lot of moisture.